Hello, everybody. Let's talk about a very exciting lens. Well, really, it's a pedestrian lens, but I think it's pretty exciting because it's a great performer. This is the Canon EF 50mm f1.8 version 1. It was made by Canon, introduced in 1987, though replaced fairly shortly after in 1990 with a version 2. Version 2 appears optically identical to this lens. However, it replaced this lens's arc form motor with a better microdrive autofocus motor and swapped the significantly better metal lens flange for the plastic flange of the version 2. Typical lens uses for this include being just a general walk around for standard photography or as an ideal first lens for learning and just for other general shooting. 50mm lenses are generalists, and a fast one like this can do most anything that a generalist lens can do. So let's jump right into what this video is going to be about in two sentences. As a generalist lens, this is a very good choice. The color rendition and sharpness consistently pleased and surprised me. Giving you nothing that Canon hasn't published in many, many marketing brochures, the focal length and AOV are 50 millimeters and 46.8 degrees diagonally on full frame that equates on APS-C standard 1.5 crop factor APS-C to 75 millimeters with a 30.4 degrees, a diagonal angle of view. Aperture range is 1.8 to 22 in third stops. The element and group count are 6 and 5. It's a double gauze lens design with a 52 millimeter filter thread. The closest focus is 0.45 meters, and for those of us in the U.S., that is 7.64 average length McDonald's french fries. It is both autofocus and manual focus with an arc form autofocus motor in the version of the lens reviewed in this video. The native mount is Canon EF. The dimensions are 68 millimeters by 51, and it weighs in at 130 grams. So it's fairly hard to come up with any kind of spectacular, life-changing, or earth-shattering tip for using a 50mm lens. So instead, I would suggest that this lens in particular is best on EF mount SLRs and DSLRs. I used it a lot on Sony for APS-C, APS-C with a speed booster, and on my Sony full frame for video and some other testing. And it was an absolute pain. Now, much of that probably stemmed from the Viltrox adapters I have for EF to FE, but those work fine on third-party EF lenses. So I strongly recommend using this lens solely in native mount. I enjoyed this lens a lot on my Canon 5D, the 1DS Mark II, and the Rebel XSN, and it performed stunningly on all three of those cameras. The next tip I have is not to underestimate this lens. It's good. It performs like a double gauze lens with some barrel distortion, light loss, and spherical aberration. But field curvature is highly well controlled, and this lens is sharp with stunning and accurate colors. Double gauze lenses are the most common type of lens in the photographic industry for a reason, and that reason is image quality and performance reliability. The only other thing I can say is that this lens can do whatever you want it to do within the limitations of the focal length. You won't be using it for ultra-wide landscapes and architecture shoots, but you can definitely use it for detail shots, portraits, street photography, and as a great lens to learn photography with.
design with nothing exceptional or special about it. Double gauze lenses, especially those designed in the 1980s and later, provide predictable and reliable results that make up the vast, vast majority of lens designs in the SLR and mirrorless spaces today. This lens happens to be an exemplary sample of what a simple double gauze lens can do. Breathing is considerable from 0.45 meters to infinity, which is to be expected of a fast 50 millimeter lens. Starting with this video right now and going forward, here is a second focus breathing test designed to replicate how lenses are more likely to be used in actual video work. These three styrene heads are life-size and show a focus draw from close to far. Note the breathing in the middle head. Zooming from a close-up person to someone about one meter away shows breathing that can likely be worked with in an actual real video recording setting. Aperture stepped in third stop increments. This lens would be a challenge to use across apertures in video, however, because it requires on-camera aperture control. The front element is non-rotating, but it does move in and out quite considerably, which is approximately 8.5 millimeters. Also, as is often the case with late 80s and 90s entry-tier lenses designed to primarily be used with autofocus, there is an embarrassing amount of manual focus ring slop and very rough manual focus ring control that is fairly unresponsive with this lens. This is not a lens to use with manual focus control, and that's true even for still work. Focus throw is quite good at 180 degrees with a stationary but very narrow focusing ring. Focus damping on my copy is limp like an overripe banana, and there is considerable plastic on plastic noise to accompany it. And by the way, of the dozens of these I've held over the years, that has always been the case. This honestly is not a lens designed for video work, and many similar spec lenses out there can better be used for video than this one. Sharpness is very good, which is to be expected of a modern double gauze lens design. I was pleased by how well this lens held up on full frame, 1.3x crop, and APS-C. Build quality is fair, though far better than the version 2. The motor is noisy and the focus ring is not great. The thing that makes this my preferred version of this lens versus the 2, however, is the metal lens mount. Having handled a number of the version 2 lenses with snapped mount flanges over the years, metal is decidedly better. Contrast is okay, but a bit flat straight out of the camera, which I of course prefer. In terms of creating images that you can edit in post, especially with a digital workflow. This lens is highly well suited for that. Aperture shape and blade count are pentagonal with five blades that create a fascinating 10 point light star pattern comprised of five primary and five secondary diffraction points. Forgive the blur on some of these stop down images, by the way, as I took them on a very windy day. Out of focus area characteristics are not particularly to my liking and that owes to the five bladed aperture and the irregular patterns it causes in out of focus areas. Honestly, the biggest flaw with 80s and 90s lenses, and this lens is by far no exception, are the cut rate apertures that muck up out of focus area characteristics. Distortion is limited to barrel distortion, standard on double gauze lenses by the way, and in all probability the only image in this video where it stands out is this photograph you're seeing right now of graph paper. Light loss is noticeable to f2.8 and effectively gone by f4 and smaller, and that's very good performance from a lens of this speed. Balance with cameras is great on every camera I used, but I'll note that it is a bit light with Canon's full frame DSLRs and that speed boosters with this lens make it a bit front heavy on small APS-C cameras. That said, it generally felt at home on all of the cameras I used it with. There's something comforting about a well-worn broken in old pair of shoes. Those ones that you wore for a couple years for going out to the store or on walks that now sit in the foyer or outside, relegated to being comfortably slipped on for housework and yard work. Those old shoes are just waiting there, ready to go when you are, up for anything until the soles someday fall off. They are happy, whether they'll be raked through some drudgery or taken on a long walk in the park. This lens, it's those old shoes. Comfortable, reliable, 
nothing fancy or special. Always there when you need to just slip it on a camera and go outside. Ready for whatever you can throw at it, and ready to perform predictably and as it always has. And that's both a compliment and not to say a thing is old shoes. So let me heap some high praise on this lens as well. Insofar as I can tell, the optical design from this lens survived through the version 2 and the STM model, which were introduced in 1990 and 2015, respectively. And the latter of those remains in production, to the best of my knowledge, as of this video's recording in 2022. If the coating materials changed, as I suspect they may have just owing to the progress of technology, I couldn't find that information anywhere. My point, however, is that this lens's optical design is, today, 35 years old and still being made, which says a lot about how right the lens designers got this lens from the start, especially thinking about how many photographic advances there have been since this lens was released. This and the successor models are the lenses that decades of photographers have learned to shoot with and, I say, great choice. A reliable Fast 50 that works well, takes nice photos, and delivers great color and image editability is a wonderful tool for your camera bag. Built around a decent, even still today, autofocus motor that's packed into a small and compact frame and weighing relatively little, this lens really gets a lot right and makes it easy to grab it and take it outside. This is one of the finest kit 50s of the last four decades and a fantastic first, primary, or even only lens to use.